my name is Mel Brown and welcome to episode 50 of my crafting podcast. This is my fortnightly vlog about knitting, crochet, weaving, spinning, dyeing, uh, anything else that seems like a good idea at the time. I am an autistic woman living in the north of England with my husband, our three daughters and three cats. You can find me on social media in places up there. Um, if it's your first time watching, hello, nice to meet you. Um, 50th episode. I should be wearing a hat, apparently, um, to celebrate, according to my friend Linda, but I haven't got one, so woohoo, it's the 50th one! Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of something exciting later on, but I'll come to that in a bit. So, these episodes have become, instead of fortnightly, more like every three weeks, and they're getting longer, and I am including more crafts, and I'm aware that some of you might not be interested in some of the crafts that I'm doing. So what I thought I would do is steal an idea from um, one of my um, podcasters I watch, Little Drops of uh, Wonderful. Um, and what Ali does is she has timestamps to say, I'm going to be talking about this at this point. So I'm going to attempt to do that. So down in the description below, this should be, I'm going to talk about knitting and crochet first, and then probably dyeing, spinning and weaving. So if you're not interested in those things, you'll be able to skip to the next thing and then a little bit sort of personal um, catch up or with something new as well. But anyway, I'll endeavour to make that a little easier for you so you can um, skip the bits that you're not interested in. Um, but none of them are going to be too jargony or anything. That, um, I'm, the, um, I, I'm a beginner in a lot of these things, so um, it'll be very much entrance level stuff. So, okay. Let's get going. Um, where are they now? What's, we'll start with the knitting and crochet. So what, uh, where are the projects that you've seen before? I always start with a memory blanket and today is no exception. Um, I haven't got it to show you because it is with Andrea. So I showed it to you last time and I had started on a border, a brown border. Um, and I wasn't sure how many rounds I would do. Well, I did, I don't know, about five or six. And it looked about right. So now I have handed it all to my blocking queen um, and all round helper outer, Andrea, who is now going to pin it to a piece of teal fleece that I showed you last time and hand sew it to that. And when that's done, I'm going to get it back and I'm just going to put some ties sort of kind of through because there'll be two pieces and there'll be the knitted piece and the fleece piece and they'll be attached at the edges. And what I'll do then is just put some ties through sort of random places, just put a piece of thread through, back untied and not to the back. Um, so to hold the whole thing together and then it'll be finished. So it's a work in progress in the sense that it's not finished, but the, all the knitting and crochet is done. So it's kind of a hybrid. So very excited about that. So that'll take a little while. Um, uh, Andrea's got the issues with her shoulder, so it's not going to be happening anytime soon, but I am done with it. Okay, number two, the advent blanket. So that's the thing with all the little squares from my advent minis. That's been taking a back burner, actually. I'd gone mad on it for the first few uh, couple months, and that's taken a bit of a back burner. Um, so yeah. no progress, well, I won't say no progress, but very little progress on that. I, you know, I had a bit of a, um, a paddy about the fact that I had too many works in progress, and I just started just finishing frenzy, trying to get everything finished. Um, and that wasn't going to be finished in the near future, so that, that um, missed out so I haven't really done much on that but that's fine and the lefty my poor lefty I feel so sad at not getting back to it I will I definitely will get back to it um but yeah they're all kind of they're I don't want to I don't want them to become languishing whips you know uh works in progress that just kind of sit around I know that a lot of people have those and there's nothing wrong with it it's just that it doesn't make me happy in fact it makes me unhappy to Think about these projects just sat there not not getting any attention um so i do i do feel bad about that and starburst is the same so that's the interlocking crochet i know I, I always want to start another one of those and i can't wait to do it but i guess other things take priority priority for me is what i'm really interested in right now but also because i teach um quite often i'm starting a project that i think might be good for a course either at the local yarn shop at yarn etc where i teach about six or seven times a year or um for my own courses that i teach in the pub here and um if i'm thinking i might do it for a course and that kind of takes precedence precedence because it's my business so um but other than that it's just generally what i'm enjoying 
so um, no progress on those but as I said I wanted to finish some things off and I did obviously I finished off the memory blanket I also finished off the southwestern cross mosaic crochet so you had seen this um, which you can see is done from the center out uh, you can see that because of the way the color changing yarn goes and the, the other side I hadn't finished but there it is so it's a very different effect and it's the same pattern but it's a very different effect um, and that's why I wanted to do two the pattern is actually for a throw so you can make it huge I only did 40 rounds um, but I didn't want to make a throw and um, it's for teaching I'm going to be teaching this yarn etc I'm not thinking not till November but I'll probably teach it in the pub maybe beforehand I don't know depends if I can if I want to <laughs> So there's that. It's a brilliant pattern. Um, it's lovely. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. So stunning. This is the look of mosaic crochet is unmistakable, isn't it? Um, and yeah, I love it. So I just basically made it into a cushion cover. So I made a flap in the same colour as this uh, with just uh, UK double crochets, basically. And this, do you know, I'm, I'm not sure, but this side, obviously it's been joined in the dark. And I, this edge here doesn't have the dark on it. So I'm thinking I should just put a row of, because these are half. No, these are just doubles. I should probably put a row of doubles along there just to make it look right. And if I was going to be using it practically, I would probably put a button on or something. But I'm not. I mean, what I when I make these things, they're typically samples for classes. And I don't really use them. Because if you're doing a class and you get somebody gets a sample of what they've made and it's got pools in it and cat hair on it and you know whatever it's not it's not very professional so when I make samples they tend to be just for demonstration purposes so I won't be using that as a cushion but it is done and I really love it I'm going to launch it over there because I've got so much stuff so oh it's my elbow honest um right water I drink lots of water right now it's got some mint leaves in it from a mint plant that I've got in my got two mint plants and a piece of lemon Right, so the other thing that I've been putting a lot of time in is obviously Tunisian brioche. So it's, it's um, modestly known as the breathtaking brioche cowl or something. Where is it? So this is again for classes. Actually, do you know what? I'm teaching that uh, in September. It's this I'm teaching in November. Anyway, whatever. So I'm just using um, Starcraft Bellissima for this. Uh, that's what that one was largely really yeah um and here it is did you see? i think i must have yeah it was it was a work in progress last time so oh my double-ended crochet hook has caught all the yarn there we go so um it's worked in the round and so you've got a double-ended hook and for those of you who know tunisian crochet you know you work the stitches on and then you work them off. You work them off at this end and you work them off at that end. Um, it's quite visually appealing, isn't it? Um, I've been trying to work out how much more of it I want to do. It's just a little bit too big to um, to work particularly well for me. Um, it's not snug, but I guess under a coat it would be. It curls at the bottom, which, I mean, Tunisian crochet always curls uh, most uh, knitted or crocheted fabric curls at some point um, but uh, if I'd have done it in a bigger hook to make it ha have more drape it wouldn't have the stiffness and I want it to st be stiff so that you can see the pattern um, obviously it won't have a crochet hook in it when I'm wearing it but because it's all acrylic it's going to be different difficult to actually block and to uh, manipulate it but um, I could just, uh, Fiat, the uh, yarn shop was just saying, you could just put a sort of crochet, standard crochet border on the bottom of there to try and stop it curling. I could also um, put a little stitch between there and there. Um, I'll ask Andrew, the blocking queen, what she thinks when I'm done with it. But I don't know, should I do any more? I'm quite happily plodding away at it. I'd like to get it off the, the hook because then I can focus on, oh, I could get back to the lefty. Um, but I don't know. Would you do more? I've got plenty of yarn left. I've got all 
all this yarn left so I can carry on but that's the problem because I want to do other things I'm tempted to stop it but is that the right thing for the project again it's going to be a sample I'm not going to use it will be a sample for classes um, so I won't be wearing it but what do you think could it be too long a bit more a bit longer put me a comment down below come on you lot who will watch and never comment come on put a comment on tell me a bit longer or not okay so that's that very close to the end I would think I'm happy with it I like the pattern um, I just kind of I always have this dichotomy if I start something if I start it in really nice yarn if I don't like it very much or it doesn't go very well well if it, like a, it's a sample so I'm not going to get to wear it so why would I use expensive yarn for something I'm not going to get to wear um, so I use acrylic stuff but then I have limits on blocking so I don't know so that is work in progress number five and remember my golden number is six so of course I started something new didn't I and I bet most of you who watch a lot will know what I started yeah it's a pair of skews so skew socks Lana Holden if you're new and you haven't heard me wax lyrical about this pattern before then you know pretty much every single episode I talk about it um, it's a magic pattern and I happen to um, twin my favorite pattern with my favorite yarn dyer um, which is easy knits so this is how it is and it's pooling in a most um, enjoy enjoyable way so for those of you who haven't seen it this is your big toe and this is the rest of your toes and this is it going up the foot in this um, skewed way so we've got teal pooling on this side and we've got pink pooling like a great big something or other on that side so yeah I just love it and I don't know if you can see the sparkle I don't know the colorway name for this this is a bit puzzling I think I must have ripped this out of John's hands before he had a chance to um, put a colorway on it but anyway I'll probably find out from the website if I wanted to but you know mystery beautiful yarn um, so as I said before it's not the kind of yarn I would typically use for skew because it doesn't have stripes so you don't get necessarily to see the effect but it actually it's working fine because you can see clearly from looking at that that the lines are going like that I don't know how the fancy bit around the ankle will look what am I yeah fairly typically I'm wearing skews this morning so you can see this bit here really beautiful bit there I'm not sure how that will go but at least you can see when you look at the, the knitted fabric that it doesn't go up the toe like this it goes up the toe like this rather than like does that make sense mm, okay so yeah um I am trying not to work on these all the time because basically I would um so yeah they're lovely what can I say um I've got my foot this is Lexi's foot measurement so I can work out when it's long enough um and yeah I don't need to show you the pattern do I because I've shown you the foot the foot the sock um I think that one I did a slip stitch in that one didn't I yeah that's um Claire Nettleship yarns on my foot oh I love those colors and um I did a slip stitch in it as well just for fun oh right so that is work in progress number six and that is my limit so you think I wouldn't have started anything else wouldn't you well I kind of I kind of didn't um so that's six but it's only five really because memory uh, I don't have any more to do on memories apart from you know later on put some ties on so. and that could be weeks or months I don't know so uh, as long as I've got it for the winter I'll be happy and it's very early spring now so Andrea there is no rush right okay so new whips on the block skews something else for a class um I do you use YouTube much? I don't know if you use it much, but I I use it all the time. It's my university. So on any given day, I will spend somewhere between an hour and four hours um, educating myself. I don't watch podcasts. I'm too competitive. Um, I, I watch Gemma B Makes, and that's pretty much the only podcast I actually watch anymore, um, which is terrible. Um, but I watch instructional videos, and at any given point I have 
remember I'm autistic so I do things a bit differently probably to a lot of you but I have a certain sort of list of subjects that I am learning about at the moment and my learning curve is like this and then I'll, it'll do like that and then it'll drop off and I won't be interested anymore either because I've learned all I need to or um, I don't know stop doing it whatever but the things I'm learning at the moment include spinning, weaving, keto um, and uh, yeah just that kind of stuff but uh, when I log on to uh, YouTube it pops up a load of videos for me suggested videos now that is just amazing because quite often most of them I'll put into my well probably half of them I'll put into my watch later and then when I'm I've got some time and I'm knitting or when I'm doing something else I'll just choose from all of these and something popped up which was a mandala um crochet mandala and I thought that would be a lovely project to do a course on I've got some of the metal rings that um that I use for weaving if people want to mount a weave on a ring so I started one but the pattern that came up was really really simple um and I thought you know people are not aren't going to pay to come and do that because it's really really simple so I thought I'd make a more complex mandala and I wonder if I can find it that's what I spent yesterday doing yesterday was a mental health day which means I kind of sit around um in in my room or in I've got a friend who has an apartment I can sometimes go up there and I just basically uh relax and chill and um it's necessary for me with I get overwhelmed with people anyway so I spent yesterday doing this now it's not quite finished but there it is have I shown you the right side or the wrong side I don't suppose you care much really because it doesn't look that different so um I've done I've got a little puff stitch in the middle and we've got lots of lovely stuff here and then as you can see <laughs> these aren't part of the design I haven't quite worked out how to attach it I've wrapped I've done um UK double crochets that's US single crochets around the white loops hoop so you can't see the white through it hopefully um and I'm now just working out how to attach them I thought I might just run a a thread back and forth but actually these need to be pulled right out to fit in they need to be sewn right onto the actual um, edging and I can't run a thread from here to here through this because it's too tight and running it through this means that it loosens up and I want each one to be pulled tight so I'm just just a few little logistics to sort out so once that's finished it will just be a little bit more taut and then I thought we could just put some fringe on to make it into a dream catcher um, if people want or just have it as a mandala so what do you think uh, would you come on a course for that uh, as well as providing the the hoop and I'll provide some materials as well you know bright colored acrylics is what we need because it's not going to be you don't need to block or anything I thought I would also look at some of the techniques that, of, of circular crochet that just finesse it a little bit like the invisible join and standing um, start with stitches rather than doing chains and things um, just to sort of some of the finessing of, of mandala crochet and then just you know provide everything so you, as long as you can crochet you, you just turn up and uh, you, you leave with one of these and if it's not finished then it'll be you'll have a good idea of how to finish it um, yeah so I like that and of course the way you choose the colours um, will completely change it the one in, uh, I was copying from mostly um, was in two colours um, and you so two colours would look quite a lot different anyway okay so that's that and that's I'm going to call that a finished object so I just need a little bit of twiddling to, to finish it off um, the other thing that I have started is big so I did an acrylic pouring workshop uh, a couple of months ago with a lovely lady um, called Kylie of Hello Crafter and it was a brilliant workshop and I was looking at the other stuff that she did and she does arm knitting and I was really interested in that because I thought again it might be something I could teach so I got a hold of Woolly Mahusiv um, which is a, a business um, based in England which does um, it's in York actually uh, very close to me which does massive yarn and I'll put a picture of the ball of yarn that I ordered here and I chose the acrylic um, because uh, it's basically roving it's basically top it's, it's not spun at all so um, I just figured that the, the acrylic will wear a bit better than wool 
So it arrived and actually it arrived with something else. What was it? Anna at Woolly Mahoosive included this, which is lovely. Um, it's a little kit. It's called the Woolly Mahoosive um, Taster Felting Kit Instructions, Mother's Day Edition. So there is a little thing of pink fibre. Isn't it cute? Um, yeah, it's it's the same size as the stuff that the that comes for the arm knitting. I've got a bit of trouble, don't I? Um, and yeah, I think it's the same stuff. Um, but then it's yeah. Anyway, it's very cute, and it also a couple of sponges with a couple of felting needles in there. If you haven't seen felting needles before, let's show you. It's got a little barb at the end which you won't be able to see. Um, just put that back in if I stab myself with it. And um, a little cookie cutter in a heart. So basically what you do is you put your heart onto the there, you put some fibre in there and then you just tap, 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 tap. It sounds like a dog scratching themselves, it's lovely. And then you just keep going and then um, firm it all up and then when it, it comes off and it's a little heart. Um, really, really cute. So that was lovely, it's a free gift to put in there. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, so that came as an extra, this rustling, noisy, noisy beast. Right. Okay. So what I actually ordered was that that big yarn, and in about an hour, well, actually a little bit longer because it took me quite a long time to get the cast on right. Um, I did a, a long tail cast on, and trying to work out exactly how much yarn I would need, I had to do it three or four times, which is fine. Actually, maybe four or five, but. Here it is. There it is. Um, beautiful colour, of course, peacock green. I chose that to go on my in my uh, front room. You watch when I used to record down there. I've got a teal wall. This is peacock green. It's not looking at all green on the screen. Let me see if I can get a bit closer. Let's put the daylight light on. Ah, oh, that's greener, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Um, that's what it is, anyway. So that's the general size of it. Um, I was thinking I would teach it. I did check with Kylie, by the way, that she wasn't that I could teach in Harrogate without. Um, Cramping her business, but she doesn't teach in Harrogate. Anyway, um, yeah, I've decided not to. The the yarn is really really expensive. I mean, you know, it's it's expensive to buy as well. It's not like um, it's expensive for the the supplier to buy as well. But um, it's the cost of the workshop. Is going to work out at something like 55 to 60 pounds. Now, admittedly, at the end of it, you will have made this and you will have that to take home. But it's just going to be a high pressure option for me because I've got to buy in the yarn um, and I've got to pay for postage. And yeah, it's just not, not going to work for me. So, um, and I'm also, if the cat decides to go like they do, that's going to be completely trashed, It'll be shredded in five minutes. Um, I'm just going to get a card here, I'm a little bit cold. Oh, this is our blanket that my library, library crochet group have made for the homeless. It's not quite big enough yet, so we need to make some more squares. But um, Right, where are we? Oh, lordy. Oh, yeah, so I think the cats will shred it. And we don't have a room that the cats don't get into, so I don't really know what to do with it. To be honest, with VAT and postage costing me about just over 50 quid. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it. So there you go. Uh, any ideas, do let me know. Um, but definitely won't be teaching it. Okay, so that is all the knitting and crochet. Um, let's now move on to dyeing. So, I was really confused about whether I'd already talked about this, but I don't think I did. Um, during, must have been during half term, 
my middle daughter and I did some yarn dyeing. Now I had a few months ago done a giveaway of a, of a yarn called Shark Attack. I called it Shark Attack because it's kind of blue and green and all oceany and then there's this red splodge. And my friend Adriana had really liked that, but she didn't win the giveaway. So I thought I would try and recreate it. And so I dyed one skein and my daughter dyed one skein. And um, this was the one that I dyed, which was meant to be Shark Attack. Um, so I'm going to open it up a bit. I'm not terribly good at wrapping skein. Um, I don't think I like it as much as the original Shark Attack. But there it is. And the skein that my daughter dyed, I actually like more. I really do like blues. I'm not so keen on the greens, but the different colours you get in there. I really, really, really like that. So, um, my friend Adriana, who watches with her husband Meryl, hello, um, look at that, see I really like that bit, that'll be quite a few stitches of that really deep red. I think that's going to be really nice. Um, anyway, I asked Adriana which one she likes and she liked them both, so I'm going to have to send them both to her. So those will be going off to America soon. Um, so yeah, that's that. Dying. The only other thing I dyed was, um, you know, last time I was talking about that grey Corriedale that I had spun and that I wanted to try, um, I tried dyeing then spinning, so dyed fibre and then spun it, and I wanted to try uh, spinning and then dyeing, and I specifically wanted to try how that, that sort of grey yarn took the colour. Now then. Oh. Ah, Sorry, Let's see if I can cut that bit out. Um, so I dyed that skein, one of those skeins of grey, and, and I just I wish I'd stop dyeing in this particular way because I don't like it. I'd got, uh, I wanted to do, I'd already started a weave that was in purple and teal. So I thought, okay, I want to do purple and teal. I, the teal was nice, I'd got plenty of teal in it, but I'd got some white patches as well, and I wanted to put the purple on them. But I just splashed it too, it was a very amateur job, I just splashed it too much and it became too blotchy. Um, I didn't like I don't like it when I do that, so I really must stop doing it. Note yourself to stop doing it. So I show you a picture of it in the skein, and then this is it in the ball. And like I was saying last time, the difference between this knitted and this woven is huge, um, because with knitting even well, I, I wouldn't knit a sock with something that thick, but you know what I mean? Even with a sock, you've got, so that's the width of the sock, you've got twice that. Um, and yeah, that's the, because I wouldn't knit a sock, something like that. Um, but uh, say with a shawl or something, you'd, you, in the, that colour change would change randomly. Um, and it, it doesn't look nice to me. But with weaving, you've got a defined amount of each row. And then... So yeah, so shorter colour changes can be can look completely different. So anyway, um, I have incorporated it into my weave, so that's what I wanted it for. So I just wanted to show you that because that's the dying bit. And I guess that's the spinning because that's hand spun as well. And as you can see, there's still quite a lot of variation. Um, that's a much um, thicker part, thinner, some of it's more twisted than others. And actually, um, whilst most spinners will be attempting to make that more and more uniform as they go through, I'm actually not. Um, I'm actually going in the other direction now, so um, I will come back to that in spinning. Okay, so that's the yarn dyeing. Spinning. So I, as I said, I've been trying for most of my spinning time to make my yarn more and more uniform and finer, thinner and um, that's traditionally what you do with weaving isn't it but actually I've had a complete turnaround in that and that's to do with the weaving um, maybe I should do weaving first let's do weaving first so um, I showed you the first things that I made last time and then I had a, what I called a sampler on the loom when I spoke to you last so this was me trying out I had a solid color um, no I didn't I had a variegated green um, warp so that's the long bit 
and as you're coming across and doing the weft that was just meant to be a solid purple and I was trying out different stitches but then I ran out of stitches to try and I started trying out other things I got very inspired by um, a lady called Stacy who was Urban Gypsy on um, uh, well everywhere but uh, certainly on uh, YouTube and I was totally inspired she does art weaving and that basically means no rules um, just do what you want you can't get it wrong just do it and that just completely makes sense to me so I started she, she recommended you get these little she calls them tongue depressors so I guess you know if you're giving looking at somebody's throat and you put a thing down there on their tongue to hold it down I don't know but um I went onto Amazon I found these little wooden sticks there uh they're sort of waxing fit so if you're putting wax onto somebody's um legs or face or whatever you, you use wooden and I, tell, I think it was for waxing strips the tongue depressor anyway I bought a big pack of those and gave half of them to Andrea because she's on this wonderful weaving journey with me as well although she's kind of a bit more on the straight of that straight now I've gone off over here playing madly and she's on the straight and narrow here so I gave her some anyway and the idea is that you get weird wonderful yarns you just got a little bit of and you wrap them on the, the tongue depressor and then sorry, the, wax, the waxing stick and then um you just use that to go through and to weave with a small amount of uh, a fancy yarn or something really nice and then you change your colors quite often um so uh i bought some of those and so i started using them and i just went to my stash and because i teach weaving circular i have a massive stash of weird and wonderful stuff so i just went there thought right what roughly suits this kind of vibe and picked a whole load of stuff up and just went mad I absolutely went mad not as mad as i <laughs> As I was going to but let me find it for you because it's finished so oh it is sorry about keep getting up now just got so much stuff so let me find the sensible end to start with so at the sensible end we have this so some texture in here some fanciness still relatively traditional just trying out different things and then yeah then it all went mad so I introduced some pink um, which I think looks absolutely lovely and then I introduced some lilac and this is a little little weft float there so it doesn't tuck behind as it should do um, that's look at that that's me tucking the end in so I guess is that the wrong side let's try the other side and hope <laughs> just put that on both sides don't worry about it I'm not worried about it um and then we just yeah just trying out different colors and then the blue i think is the one thing i would take out if i could i have to chop that end off and then um some furry stuff and yeah just and that's the warp same yarn as the warp made as weft as well which is interesting and then some other bits and pieces I tried different techniques just making it have to go along Oh, and this is interesting. This is called clasped weft. Can you see that? It looks like a skyline, isn't it? City skyline. And then here I've got some, I don't think you can see it on that side. On that side is better. Some little floats, so little bits that don't go where they're meant to do with the under rosa. A little pattern of that. And then some more hairiness. And then onto the end. Uh, yeah, some more little experiments with things so basically I was just playing with it now it's a piece of cloth it's a little bit mad I don't know what you would use it for it is a little bit wider than your average scarf well I know maybe it isn't actually so I think it's um and I've got really long fringe because that's just what I had left and I haven't trimmed it so I probably probably could do with tri trimming it I guess anyway it's um it's a bit more uh, solid than the previous weaving I've done I, I pushed it down more um so it's a bit more solid so it would definitely work as a scarf if I were to ever be the kind of person that did that it would work as a wrap oh <laughs> if I hadn't just thrown it it would work as a wrap um like that but it would also possibly work as a piece of fabric to make into something else now the thought of cutting it, weaving is a bit scary is it like cutting knitting but it's perfectly possible um and so basically that's going to sit in my um body of work wait for the right moment to come alive 
so it's a bit crazy and um yeah i like it i really like it and that got me started um and then all hell let loose basically i'll show you the warp of my next project so bearing in mind a warp um, in traditional weaving is all on one yarn <laughs> often all in one color but you know sometimes the color changing yarn it's all one yarn you can see that there's different colors textures sizes everything on that warp um, and i then started weaving the weft in just i just went mad oh my goodness i can't tell you how happy it made me it was absolutely fantastic i got some of this into it so it's my first hand spun and um dyed as well into it and the funny thing is with weaving you know with knitting you can look, hold it up and look how it looks even if it's got needles in it or whatever and certainly with crochet you can hold it up and see how it looks and if there's color changes and you can see how they look at each other with weaving you don't get that because you can only see um the bit you're working on and about 10 12 centimeters of um what you've just done because you've got all the warp left to be used on the front um, roller and you've got all the weaving you've already done on the back so you've just got this little window of, of weaving that you're looking at and when your weaving comes up to, toward the end you roll it on so you're only looking at a window of yeah I, I don't really know the measurements but about that much um, at any given moment so uh, you can't say, oh, well, I did use this yarn before. How big a stripe did I do with it? You, you don't know. And the, you can't say, oh, how does that look as a whole? You just don't know. So you just have to weave away and just hope it was going to look okay. And then when you finished, you pull it off the roller. And that's just an amazing moment to have a look and see how it looks. So, um, yeah, I have enjoyed that so much. I found a permanent position for my um, loom. So it's bolted to the breakfast bar. So when Dave's cooking, I can, when I'm not actually actively helping him, I can do something. I can just sit in there on my own in the evenings or whatever. So, yeah, I am definitely loving the weaving. Um, and what else do I want to say? I think that's it. So because of wanting to weave with unusual yarns, um, I want to start spinning with unusual yarns. And that means making unusual yarns. So that's opened up a whole new area of interest for me. And if you're thinking of that area, there's Ashley, what's her name? Um, uh, she's amazing. And uh, Stacey from Urban Gypsy, but that's more, she doesn't really talk about the weaving much, uh, the spinning much, I don't think. Um, but there's lots of really interesting, if I think of any more, I'll put them in the show notes. Um, interesting people that I'm following who do... Um, oh, yeah, it's Pinky Punky. She seems to have stopped recording, though, but she's a British woman in the north. I think she stopped recording. But I loved her. Um, and so basically I'm learning how to do art yarn. Now, art yarn tends to have lumps and bumps in it. And a standard spinning wheel has what's called an orifice, which is, as you'd imagine, a small hole in the front. And that's what the spun uh, yarn goes into. Now, if you're making an art yarn that's big and bumpy, it gets stuck in the orifice, which all sounds vaguely rude. But um, so uh, my friend Andrea, who you hear a lot about, um, she has got a Magicraft Pioneer. It's been erratic for a couple of years. So that has it doesn't have a little hole orifice. It's got a, a large um, ring. So it's much, much uh, better suited for art yarn. And it's got a massive bobbin as well. So you can imagine a little bobbin that's designed for you to be spinning really nice fine yarn. And you're putting this great big bobbly stuff on it. The bobbin fills up in five minutes. So it's a massive bobbin and a big orifice. <laughs> so I have borrowed that. I am fostering it until further notice. And it is amazing. So it's a different way of using a wheel. Mine's got one pedal. So if you imagine sat there, one foot's going like this and the other foot's standing on the floor. Um, <clears throat> this one has two. And that's a very different motion. And it's a different wheel. I mean, all wheels are different in the same way as all cars are different and all horses are different. You know, you have to, you've got the skills, but you still have to adapt them to this. So I'm adapting that, but I was also trying straight away to do a new technique, which is, core spinning so instead of just 
spinning your fibre out, uh, making it nice and thin, twisting it around and making it, you have um, an existing uh, yarn, uh, a nice strong one, and that's going straight in. And what you're doing with your fibre is you're holding it at right angles and it's wrapping itself around um, your core. So if you're interested in that, just you know, look on YouTube, core spinning. Um, and you can make some really, really interesting effect of that. And I hadn't ever really thought about the fact that um, I've always plied one of my spun singles with another of my spun singles. But actually, you can ply with another um, yarn, a commercial yarn, a thin glittery yarn, whatever you like. And you can have different effects from that. You can have them coming so they just basically wrap around each other. You can have one of them at right angles. And that means that this one wraps itself around that. And then you can have it like that. So this one wraps itself around that. So different effects. And then you can move that up and down so that you, you get a lot of it wrapped around in one place. So loads and loads of variation available to make interesting, weird art yarns. Now, I hadn't thought about making those before because what would you do with them? Well, now I know what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to make them into art weaves. So a completely new perspective on everything. Um, I'll show you a pic of my first um, att attempts at the art weaving. Sorry, the art spinning. So if that looks like a messy, bumpy pile of mess, then that's what it is. Um, that's fine. Um, it's loads of mixed fibres. <clears throat> I did a swap with my friend Sarah. We've got another one in a week or so. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, and she gave me some really random fibres. There's some um, uh, recycled plastic bottles, banana fibre, all kinds of things. So, and I've got some cashmere. and what. So I was just randomly picking fibres. Um, and trying to do lumpy bumpy bits, doing core spinning, all kinds of things in there. Um, and the untidiness of it will probably be eased by applying it with a nice thread. I don't know. It's all just experimentation. And really, when it comes to weaving, um, if it's going to be something like a, a scarf, which you can very gently look after, then it doesn't matter. So I'm basically learning a whole new skill again. Um, which is just wonderful. It really, really suits my um, my personality to be learning all over again. Something new. A cat trying to get in here. Come then. This is Pip. She won't let me hold her for long. There she is. She's very loud and squeaky. Um. And she's very assertive. If she wants to be somewhere, then she's going to be there. Um, so, right. Go sit down somewhere. So, here we go. So, yeah, very much at the beginning and really very much enjoying it. Um, and again, the link between one craft and another is just magic because um, it really informs my dyeing. Um, thinking about how it's going to look in the weave. My spinning is going to look in the weave. Right, enough. So that's, we're done spinning. I've done spinning. Oh dear. Did I tell you, did I work? Oh, I don't know, I'll have to look at the figures later on. So I've done dyeing, spinning, weaving. Something new. Um, because I decided I was going to do this art weaving, I went to the Cone Exchange. Now, if you're local to the north of England and you haven't been to the Cone Exchange, um, it's amazing. Uh, it's a charity shop, effectively, for craft stuff. But more than that, um, it is run by some really great people. Um, but it is funded by Betty's and Taylor. So Betty's Cafe, you know, the really posh cafes in Harrogate, and there's probably one in York or something. And Taylor's Teas. Um, they all of their industrial offcuts go to the Cone Exchange. Um, so if they're making some cloth, then they've got cones sort of, uh, of part used and uh, they'll go there and a load of other companies also um, send their stuff there so they're kind of diverted from landfill as it were and then th they're sold there so I I've talked about Cone Exchange before so I won't go into it too much but um, I went there and I bought this lot so the most texture and weird stuff that I could possibly get my hands on including some black silk with little um, brass rings on it, look like washers, most peculiar thing. Um, and I used as many of those as I could in that first art weave, which is 
Uh, have I shown you any pictures of that? I'll show you a couple of pics of it now. So it's near the end, and I'm very sad about that because I want to carry on weaving it, but it is near the end, and I'll be able to show you that next time. Um, but what I basically did was decided on a, um, a colour scheme, which was interestingly teal and purple, and I um, I then gathered all the stuff from what I'd bought, which I think I'd kind of bought with this weave in mind. I don't know if I'd already started it, um, but those are two of my favourite colours anyway. Um, just making sure the cat oh, isn't attacking the, uh, the arm knitting. Selected a, a group of yarns I thought would go together and I put them all down. And then I've just picked up bits as, as I want to go as, uh, as I go along. So that's the cone exchange. Also something new, I've shown you that, twisted yarns. So my twisted yarns um, bo monthly box came. And it had some bulbs to grow some plants, which is downstairs ready to plant. It had a little local beeswax candle. So they're local to Hertfordshire, which is actually where my husband is from. There's a cute little beeswax candle there. And the yarn, how awesome is that? So it's called Daffodil. It's chunky and it's superwash merino. So it's, it's really soft and lovely. I don't know what I would do with it. Um, Louisa, who runs Twisted Yarn, suggested a cowl or a hat. I don't really make hats. But I think I could do a cowl. I don't really wear yellow very often, so I don't know. I just have to enjoy that in my stash for a little while and then decide what to do with it. And the only other something new is not really yarn related, but it's this. Okay, right. I am quietly, calmly going to do a giveaway for my 50th episode. I did a giveaway before and um, I made the title of the with video giveaway and um, got a load of people coming to watch it just for the giveaway. And the idea with that is that you attract people for the giveaway and then they stay and carry on watching. That didn't really happen. So um, what ha ended up happening was the person who won never watched the podcast again. So they never found out they'd won. Um, and that was a bit depressing for me. It's a nice idea to bring new people in, but actually uh, I'd rather do something for the people who watch all the time, so the 50 to 70 of you who watch it every time. So I'm not going to announce the giveaway on um, anything. I'm just going to quietly tell you guys I'm doing a giveaway. So trying to think about what to do. You know how random my dying is. It's, um, yeah. I, I, I can make a decision about what technique I'm going to use and what colours I'm going to use, but I can't make a decision about what the outcome is going to be because I don't know. So what I thought I would do is anybody who is watching at this point, um, please put a comment below uh, what your favourite colour is. Don't be too specific because I'm not that great with colours. So it might be, um, you know, don't go with burnt orange or mushroom or something like that. Just go with the general sort of family of colours. You're like, I like, I like light blues or... I, I like um, lilacs or whatever. Tell me what you like. Um, that's all you need to do. And then I will draw um, in a week or so. I will draw somebody out from that. And then I will dye a skein of yarn in the colour or colours that you've suggested. Um, and we will see how it comes out. So um, it will be sock yarn because that's what I have. I don't have any DK. Um, so that's the giveaway. All you need to do is just post down below. Okay, um, on to a bit of personal stuff. Um, the keto is going really well. I have had some stomach aches and some constipation and things like that, but I think I'm coming out the other side of that now. It's been four, it's my fifth week, I think. Although I did start a little bit early, so we might already be at five weeks. So the original aim was to help with an inflammatory skin condition I have. I'm not sure whether it's worked for that yet. It certainly hasn't got any worse. Um, it was also to help with the pain in my hands, which it has done brilliantly. Um, I have no pain in my hands and that is so good for me because the thought of having, not being able to knit and crochet is just scary. It's like, you know, not being able to breathe. I just can't, I just can't think about it. Um, I have lost a little bit of weight um, and the energy that I have is quite amazing. Um, 
and that's led me to start a new walking goal. So I've been doing a bit more research about exercise. And again, you know, we were always told sort of in the 80s and 90s that you need to, no pain, no gain, you need to get out there and do aerobic, uh, you need to go running and all these things. Well, I don't think now that that's actually a great thing, particularly as I'm not a very fit person now. I mean, I have done triathlons in the past, you know, about five or so years ago, but I'm not a very fit person now. So going running isn't aerobic anymore. It's anaerobic <laughs> because I can't get enough oxygen in. And uh, that kind of um, exercise produces cortisol, which isn't very good for um, general well-being and weight maintenance and things. So um, actually, it appears that walking is better for general health. And that's better for me anyway, because there's um, what, about 14 stone eight at the moment. So um, that weight on my ankles and knees sort of pounding along is not good. But that weight walking is a completely different thing. So um, I have set a walking goal. Now, uh, I wanted to do 6,000 steps a day. That's, you know, bare minimum for a lot of people, but I don't tend to achieve that uh, probably two or three times a week. Um, so what I've decided to do is to set a goal and to achieve that. And the, when I can achieve that seven days in a row, then I'm going to treat myself to a Fitbit because I have my phone in my pocket and that records my steps. But if I have put my phone down somewhere, it doesn't record them. If I haven't, if I'm wearing my PJs and I haven't got a pocket, it doesn't record them. And the Fitbit kind of does a few other things as well. It records your sleep, although I think that's a little bit um, erratic, and your heart rate. And the other thing is, it's rather than just doing one long walk in a day, the Fitbit kind of reminds you to say, you know, if you haven't done any exercise this hour, so it reminds you to keep getting up and that's good for producing inflammation, which is another thing, you know, the, the inflammatory, inflammatory skin thing. So um, that will help me to focus on uh, being more active in general. So um, I'm on day five at the moment. I've already achieved my 6000 goal. And, you know, I've, I've gone for step goals before, but I've never quite achieved them. And I think I know why it's different this time, because I have applied my autism to it this time. Um, so here we go. Um, 6,000 steps a day and I've got just in the village uh, the village I need this is one of the walks I could do another one another one another one I could just walk into the shop and back so there's all the different places that I could go walking and how many steps they are um, so I walked around it was a reservoir near us that I walked around um, Swinsty it's beautiful I put some pictures on Instagram um, that's about 7,000 steps to go all the way around it. it takes an hour and a half to drive there uh, walk all the way around and come back I've always got that and then just walking up to one of the village and back is 3,000, walking up the other of the village and back is 2,200. So if I put a go end to end, I've got 5,000. And so I'm starting to put numbers on these things um, so that I can plan my day. But also something that's uh, happening, which is not me at all, is spontaneity. Now, if you know anybody autistic, you'll know that spontaneity is not our strong point. So this morning, for example, I had planned my walk yesterday and I had originally planned to walk at one. And then I walked after lunch one time this week and it was not good. I got a cramp and it's better to walk fasted anyway. So I thought, OK, I'll go before lunch because I don't eat breakfast. So before lunch, I um, I'll typically finished eating about half six the night before. So, I'm, you know, 16 hours fasted, really good time to do some exercise. So I thought, I'll go at 11. And then as Lexi, my second daughter, was leaving the house this morning to go to school, the sun was shining and I thought, sun is shining. I could go out now. That's a really scary thing for me. It's just kind of, oh, no, it's not going to happen to the podcast. And then I'm going to go out. But I overcame it and I went out. And that's a big thing, really big thing. Um, and I did go for a walk. I did go kind of village end to end. And um, I think that's something I want to do. I want a goal to be a little bit more spontaneous, only in that, you know, there's a, there are limits to what I can achieve. I am autistic after all. But... Um, and I think even I think most people, you just kind of get a plan for your day, don't you? But I want to have that kind of almost Pavlovian response where some training, I'm going out to get me to be more of an outdoors person. Um, so that is going to be really good. Actually, it looked lovely out there. Once I got out, there was a biting wind and my everything was wrapped up in my face. It was like, oh, so cold. But anyway, it was fine. So um, what else do I want to talk to you about? Oh, yeah. Uh, Annie, youngest daughter, doing online school. It's going really well. I'm getting a few hassles from school themselves, but um, yeah, it's it's okay. And I, I'm sure everybody's dealing with the coronavirus right now. 
Um, my second daughter is doing French A-level and she's meant to be leaving for a French trip on Sunday. And it's a brilliant trip. She gets to stay with a family. She gets to work in a nursery for a week. So she'll be totally immersed in French language for a week. But of course, that's going to be cancelled probably tomorrow um, because of the coronavirus, which is really gutting because it's such a great experience um, to, to be missing out on. But anyway, so that's a bit sad. I think that's it just under an hour which is not as bad as I thought it might be so there we go but if you've got this far well done I don't actually know how many people get right to the end it, it must be quite um I'm sure Kathy does Kathy I'm sure you get right to the end and Adriana some of my um long um acquaintances on the on the uh, podcast so um get in touch please put a comment below just say something I love it when you get in touch there's a couple of you who always get in touch um Honeydew Melons and, uh, and Rosalba and lots of people who get in touch. I love it. I really do enjoy it. Um, I'm going to put the show notes over on Ravelry. Um, so you can click on the link below and that will take you to everything that I've talked about. Um, but if you want to have the giveaway, just reply with what colour, colourways, colour types you like. You can even if you want to say, I, I like, um, well, I can't do self-striping, but yeah, I don't know. Just say randomly what colours you like. Um, and then I will pick you out and draw your yarn uh dye your yarn for you okay super right um have a great two or three weeks or however long it is till i get around to it again um happy crafting uh, thank you for watching bye